Hi, this is BB Ukraine Analytics. My name is Bogdan Budkevich and I'm Ukrainian journalist and vlogger. Hi, and I'm Olena Vosrova, a Ukrainian vlogger. Thank you for subscribing to our channel and supporting us. Here we give you top news, analytics and insights about Ukraine, about Russia-Ukraine war and about Ukraine inner politics from Ukrainian perspective. And in this video we will tell you about one of the biggest problems that Ukrainians face today. And this is a big, serious demographic crisis that is impending in Ukraine. The birth rate in Ukraine may fall to the lowest level in the world because of the war. The Wall Street Journal issued a long read, Russia's invasion triggers baby bust in Ukraine. It's about a slump in a birth that is accelerating decades of population decline and deepening a demographic crisis. In general, uh, the downward trend in the birth rate began after Ukraine regained its independence from the Soviet Union in 1991. The economic crisis and shocks made many Ukrainians go abroad to search for work. And then one child per family became the norm. The birth rate fell by 12% uh, percent after the Russian Federation annexed Crimea and invaded eastern Ukraine in 2014. So, actually, the birth rate in Ukraine was the lowest in the Europe even before the full-scale invasion of the Russian Federation in 2022. And now our Ukrainian demographers predict that this indicator may become the lowest in the world in the next two decades. They alarm. It is obvious that the full-scale invasion of Russia is deepening this democratic crisis. The number of births in the first half of 2023 was 28% lower than in the same period in pre-war time in 2021. The VCG notes that in order for the Ukrainian population to maintain its size, every woman should give birth to approximately two and one children. Another factor in the declining birth rate is that the full-scale war caused millions of women and children to leave. At the same time, men aged 18 to 60 can't leave the country because of martial law and mobilization. A lot of young men are mobilized and fight with Russian occupiers. This leads to the physical separation of many couples. This war separates and breaks families, provokes divorces, personal drama and tragedies. Many people decide to delay childbearing. We even have a term for this, a delayed child as well as a delayed love and a delayed life. And it's a big question, how people will behave when hostilities stop and men are allowed to leave the country again? Probably they will go to their women and children who have already adapted to other countries and they will never come back. In the worst case scenario, Ukraine's population could fall below 30 million within the next two decades, from about 43 million before the full-scale invasion of Russia. In half a year, in 2023, 96,755 uh, uh, children were born in Ukraine, which is 28% less than in the corresponding period of 2021, when 135,079 children were born. In general, birth rates in Ukraine have been falling since 2013 by about 7% a year. This year, an average of about 16,100 children are born every month. In previous year, before the full-scale invasion, this number had ranged from 21,000 to 23,000 per month. Ella Libanova, the director of the Institute of Demography and Social Research, says that the demographic forecasts for Ukraine are disappointing and frustrating. She notes that our country has a very high premature mortality rate. 42% of 20-year-old youth in Ukraine do not live to the age of 65. That is, they die during the period of working age. At the same time, the share of people aged 65 plus already exceeds the share of youth under 15 by 20%. Imagine what a demographic abyss awaits for us in the future. Add to this a number of men and women who will no come back from the front line, who will die in this war on the battlefields. The longer the war lasts, 
the more people die, especially people of reproductive age, I think that we and uh, the whole world will be shocked when we count how many Ukrainians were killed in this war on the battlefield or were tortured on the occupied territories or were killed by Russian missiles in peaceful cities and villages. There are many cases when Ukrainian women on the frontline territories have to give birth to children under occupier's fire right in bomb shelters. I can tell you my personal story. When my brother and his wife gave birth to their child in Irpin, a town in Kiev suburbs near Bucha that suffered even more than Bucha. So they couldn't get to a maternity hospital because of the constant extensive shelling in the first week of occupation. And they had to seek help in our local polyclinic. Thank God everything went well right after the birth of the child they managed to evacuate from Irpin. And in a day after, the Russian bombed and destroyed our local polyclinic. They bombed maternity hospitals with women and children as well. You pro probably could see this in your news feed from Ukraine. Actually, many Ukrainians delay children because they have no sense of security. Russian missiles or shahets can strike anywhere. There are no safe places in Ukraine except maybe for bomb shelters. But you know, you can't sit in bomb shelters for all time. And a special theme, genocidal rape, when Russian occupiers raped Ukrainian women on the occupied territories. United Nations appointed independent rights experts published the findings of the latest report into Russia full-scale invasion of Ukraine. Commission Chair Eric Mosse provided harrowing details on the findings to the Council, noting that in Kherson region, Russian soldiers raped and committed sexual violence against women of ages ranging from 19 to uh, 83 years, often together with threats or commission of other violations. Frequently, family members were kept in an adjacent room, thereby forced to hear the violations taking place, uh, Mr. Mose said. And that's what should be qualified as a genocidal rape. Russia commits the most horrifying crime in Ukraine, and it is genocide. The world should see this and understand what is really going on here. Imagine what kind of trauma these women have and how to heal these wounds now so these women will feel the desire to live, love, have sex and give birth to children again. All these facts make a demographic crisis even deeper. And to make the picture of the demographic crisis whole, we should add to it the intention of Putin to destroy our civil infrastructure. And without infrastructure, life in Ukraine will become unbearable. And this will make a lot of people, mostly women with children, leave the country. What do you think is the purpose with which Russians want to black out and freeze Ukraine this winter again? This Putin's purpose is called the depopulation and de-urbanization of Ukraine. In simple words, Putin and Russians want to chase Ukrainians from their land, occupy it and populate it with Russians. That's why we need more anti-aircraft and anti-missile defense. We don't know how long this war will last, but we understand that the longer the war, the deeper the demographic crisis will be. We and our allies often talk about Ukraine's victory, trying to define what Ukraine's victory is. Recently, King Charles went to France and addressed to French lawmakers. He said, the United Kingdom will be one of the France's closest allies and best friends. Our determination and our alliance are more important than ever in response to Russia's invasions on Ukraine, he added. Together, we are unwavering in our determination that Ukraine will triumph and that our cherished freedom will prevail. It was really a historical moment when a leader of such a high level clearly articulated and firmly stated that Ukraine will triumph. Because before that, the concept of non-defeat of Ukraine prevailed in the minds of the world leaders. But what is a triumph for us Ukrainians? First and foremost, the survival of our population. Ukraine is people with their unique culture, code and ancient history. We can deoccupy territories, but if there will be no one left to live on them, Ukraine will turn into a museum of triumph on the ruins. And we hope that our Western allies understand this. 
understand what demographic crisis awaits for us in case the war will last for years. We also hope that this understanding will be embodied in modern offensive weapons such as ATACMS and F-16 that will create a technical advantage of our armed forces, which will allow our army to defeat Russians on the battlefield and chase them away from our land. That's all for today. Please write your comments right under this video. Give us your like and please subscribe to our channel. Here we give you top news, analytics and insights about Ukraine, Ukrainians, about our inner politics and Russia-Ukraine war. So subscribe to our channel if you want to get information from the Ukrainian perspective directly from the Ukrainians. See you later. Papa.